All right, welcome back. Part two of our coverage of Hasbro PulseCon 2023. Big news, lots of reveals, lots to talk about. We kind of break it up because it'd be a lot to cover in a single episode. Too much, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, back at it again. Let's go. All right. We're going to jump straight in. Hope you guys have checked out part one. If you haven't, go ahead and click that. Uh, click up in the top right corner and check out part one. But let's go ahead and jump in. First up, we're talking some Jada toys here. Just a quick little reveal from them. They're getting their feet wet here with some Street Fighter figures. $25 for a, a Ken. Or no, this is Ken, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Ken, Ken, Ken. Him and Ryu. I was going to mix that up. But here he is from Street Fighter from Jada Toys. And he comes a little bit of an accessory piece. And I mean, I feel like they did a, a good job on like the sculpt of the figure itself. And the articulation looks, looks good. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know where they're pulling their face from, but I feel like it's probably accurate to something. But for me, it's a little too, too cartoonish. I think considering the price point and that it's Jada Toys, <laughs> um, I think it's it's good enough. It's good okay. enough, right? Like because it's an animated video game and a lot of the, yeah. the, they're basing kind of off the, the 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 classic 100% first Street Fighter game. Like it's not no Street Fighter 2. It's not no Street Fighter 6. Right. It's Street Fighter 1. So this is literally pixels. So like, this is HD. Right, yeah, this is <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but there you go. There's Ken here um, from Jada Toys. Just a quick little... One thing that's interesting though, is their effects pieces are very similar to like Bandai model kit pieces. Even the stand, the stand, yeah. like they're almost uh, straight, especially if you're familiar with the Dragon Ball, the Dragon Ball, it's exactly like that. Like they're coming home with, with the stand. The, even the plastic looks very similar. It does, it does. It's interesting. Okay, but yeah. Let's go ahead and jump over to our friends over at Diamond Select. They have some news for us. They are doing part of their like uh, recoloring versions, uh, recoloring wave of Pacific Rim figures. They are doing a Kaiju drone. This, of course, is from Pacific Rim 2. And for 30 bucks, not bad. Here's a look at the original release, the white version, which is movie really accurate, of course. But here he is in like this war. Like a molten guy, kind of. Yeah. Yeah, molten lava. Yeah. You know, I think it looks cool, but when we covered the first part of this, so the first wave where they did uh, Gypsy, uh, Gypsy Av Avenger, and Saber Athena, I actually almost liked those colors more than the original. Whereas this one, it looks good, but I still prefer the white one. I think the white one looks better. The white one does look better, and for me, seeing this, I, I always like this is a Sangheili, right? This is an elite. Yeah, you're right. I, I yeah. that didn't, I didn't make the connection, but that's 100 percent right. I remember when I first saw the movie, I was like, what are elites in this doing in this movie? <laughs> Giant elites, yeah. <laughs> but like even the mouth where it opens up with like the exactly. Predator style. But um, someone someone on the Pacific Rim 2 team loved Halo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so, something I hope more we see, because for the most part, the repaints that they've been doing have been... Oh, wait, no, because they never did one because it was NECA. I was going to say I kind of wanted to see maybe repaints of the, the first movie. But no, never mind. Oh, that Diamond, yeah. didn't, Diamond, Diamond didn't do that. Never mind. Diamond didn't have the license for that one. Yeah, that was. Never mind. Uh, but along with that, also we have Titan Redeemer in his new color, in their new colorway, and this one's just a slight variation. I, I actually do prefer the new color version. Here's the original version in that mm -hmm. green. This the tan and brown with the silver just looks better. I think aesthetically. Yeah, I agree. I have that green one, and it's honestly all the detail gets lost because it's like a dark, dark green. Whereas yeah. this one, because of the multiple shades and the black outlines, it really pops in. It makes it look like a better figure. It makes it look more like a, you know, like a robot. Yeah. And the other one there. But yeah, there's Titan Redeemer, 30 bucks for that friend. All right, that's gonna round it up for those, just a little bit of some new snippets there. Let's jump into the Star Wars panel. Uh, of course, they had the Star Killer for $111 with two Stormtroopers and all the effect pieces. Last I checked, still available for pre-order. You could still get your hands on this. So it's really cool that, I don't know if they bumped stock amounts or if people were just were not that interested. I don't know. No. So uh, when I, when the, on the first day, what's it called? The Power Rangers Omega Ranger team was the only one that sold out. But oh. then it's now back in stock. So what happens is actually oh. um, is they have stock that's already made and that sells out. So okay. if you look right now, on the first day, it was ready to ship. 
if you look oh, right okay. now on, to on okay. all the sets technically all of them are sold out technically and they're all now pre-orders the omega I see. the 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 black series one and even the joe cobra three pack okay they're all yeah. technically sold out but they're i guess doing a new order and so they're up for pre-order but with that's, that there's a, good. there is it is good but there is a caveat because a lot of people i've seen post that their pre-orders get canceled i don't know the logistics oh. of it or what it is but maybe con exclusives but some people get it and some people their pre-orders get canceled so if you didn't That's... get it at the actual sale like you're gonna get it if you got it 100 but the, right, the pre-order right. for some reason sometimes people don't get it a little bit of a risk there for some reason yeah that's yeah. weird wow i mean you feel like they would just take the number of pre-orders and then go get those figures you know yeah i don't know make them. i don't know that's interesting everyone uh, except detroit seal detroit seal is actually still uh ready to ship <laughs> he's the one that was sold the worst <laughs> he sold the worst but, but yeah no I, we've covered this figure before so cool to get star killer he looks great he's come with some really cool effects as well so. all right Let's go into the PulseCon stuff. They are doing an archive wave of the Imperial Stormtrooper. Just your basic Stormtrooper there. Nothing fancy, nothing new. Uh, I'm not sure what body or legs they're using, but they're also doing Luke Skywalker archive, which we have gotten before as well. All right. Um, yeah, and one thing I will say is I, I really hope, because when they did the new mold for the Phase 1 Clone Trooper and the, and the Stormtrooper, right, they redid them. They're all new yeah. figures compared to what we originally got. Okay. They inserted an actual head sculpt underneath, like a Tamir Molson oh, unpainted right, head sculpt, right? right? Yeah. yeah. And what happened with these Stormtrooper figures when they were initially released and the Phase 1 Clone Trooper, the helmets were glued on really bad. Like, they would be warped and wonky, and they looked terrible. Like, the back would be... Like, oh, I, I, I was so pissed. Like, I called Hasbro to get an exchange. They didn't want to exchange me. But I <laughs> hope that now they've corrected it, because... Man, these stormtroopers were bad in regards to the helmet glue placement. Yeah, yeah. Like especially if they glue it bad, it's gonna you know be skewed, it's stuck there. Yeah, and you yeah. have to. It's really hard to take it off without damaging it. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. So that stormtrooper Luke Skywalker archive, um, as well as the Darth Vader archive. Oh, okay. Wait. What's Hold crazy on. about that is Luke Skywalker was already archived. Yeah. Let's let's let me, let me just get through all these real quick, and I'll kind of explain what's going on here. So Luke Skywalker, Darth Vader archive, and Bo-Katan archive. Now you're probably thinking like, yeah, like we've already gotten these archives. What's going on? Uh huh. So these are, for whatever reason, exclusive to outside the U.S. I, like I don't understand what they're yeah, doing. Yeah, I here. did see that. I did see that. So none of these will be in stores in the U.S., but they will mm-hmm. be over in Europe, in, in, in Canada, and everywhere else. So maybe it does make sense. it kind of makes sense to me just because. A lot of the times, even on our channel, and I see on other channels and other uh, in comment sections, uh, collectors outside the U.S. really complain of how hard to find um, American figures, which Hasbro is, are to get. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Like, because th- technically they have to import them. So if you think about it, like imports, like it's hard to get Figmas over here and Nendoroids and things like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's kind of like that for them. Yeah, that's that's what I was thinking. I'm thinking they're like, I'm hoping that there's not an increase of shipping on this. I'm hoping that somehow they they're able to decrease the shipping costs for them but still but make these toys available to them i'm thinking maybe they like set up a shop somewhere in the eu where they can then ship those international orders domestically right it's kind of what i'm thinking that these are for and maybe you know this also potentially means that more of those figures will get released domestically for those friends over the sea but even as outside the u.s fan channel exclusives or archives i still think they're terrible choices even though they're (laughs) uh, i think besides the stormtrooper I think bad choices. Okay, talk about Luke. Luke's pretty readily available, right? I mean, he was released in the very first Black Series wave. Then he was archived already, and now this is the, the another archive. And then Bo-Katan, same thing, right? Like multiple I mean, releases, multiple releases. Credit collection sat there for a while. Like she went on sale multiple times. Mm-hmm. Very I mean, easily accessible. There's a million different Darth Vaders, right? And they all basically <laughs> look the same. <laughs> it's all Darth Vader. Yeah. Slight yeah, yeah. differences, but yeah, okay. Yeah, but yeah, so interesting move there from them. We'll see what else they do with, with this if they continue to carry this on for those friends overseas. Which be cool. Which be cool. All right, let's get into the reveals. First up, we have Balin Skull, our boy Balin. Twenty five dollars mainline release. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. Ray Stevens. Yes, let's rest in peace, that friend here. How far are you? Oh, we won't talk any spoilers, but no, I haven't watched? started it. No. Okay. 
Well, great figure here. I think they did a really good job on the likeness. Yes. Um, I like how bulky and stiff he looks, at least in these mm -hmm. poses, because that's definitely his movement. That's definitely his fighting style. It's very yeah. like he's stiff, an old man. Old, he's a, yeah, he's a girthy man. Yeah, so and it looks good. Um, even though it is just kind of a basic black figure, there's a bit of a coloration in his chest and in his armor. Yes, and I think that paint breaks up the silhouette of this figure so nicely, and it yeah. just adds that extra oomph to take this figure over the top. Like, if it was all black, kind of like the Darth Maul figure was in the very first Black Series wave, where it was yeah. just a straight black, Yeah, it, do it doesn't look as good as this. I definitely appreciate that blue paint. I agree. It just gives you something more to look at, something more to kind of keep your eye Yeah, the sculpt. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But he does look good. There's that Balin skull. Next up, we got everyone's girlfriend, Shin Hati. <laughs> <laughs> 25 as well. And there were, I, heard, I did hear some people complaining about her haircut, but like, that's her haircut in the movie. Yeah, like, that's her haircut. No, that looks, looks like it. That's looks like her. She's got the eyeshadow all blacked out. Like, uh -huh. That is, this is Shin Hati. <laughs> Now, yeah. the coloring is a little brighter, but I, again, I think this is more of like uh, the Narok figure that we talked about, where it's in the show because of like, you know, filters and, you know, color corrections, it gets dulled down. But at screen accurately, it is going to be these colors. That makes sense. That makes sense. So, and and even if you like were to take photos with them, you're going to do your own color correction on them. Yeah, your own filters. Exactly. It's better to have the color than to not have the color. <laughs> mm hmm. I think it looks good, yeah. yeah. Star Wars fanboys were screaming. They're, yeah, they're the girlfriends. <laughs> they can finally they own their girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> but there's old Shin Hati as well. And yeah, honestly, like, so cool to get these now. Like, to have these announced, have these, like, figures molded. Because it's right on the heels of Ahsoka. You're not having to yeah. wait a while. Especially, you know, you know, for other things. But yeah, no, it's great to, like, have these available. Uh, at least for pre-order. Great, great reveals there. Next up, we get Ezra's slash Sabine's uh, role-playing lightsaber. It is the updated ones where you get the nice stand and they can also fight uh, while they're standing up with other ah, lightsabers. Yeah, $279. I mean, I remember back when I bought my lightsaber. Yeah, it wasn't a removal hilt, but $279 for a lightsaber? I don't know, man. No, That's yeah, that, uh, that Force Effects Elite cost $150 just for that whatever that saying those the dumb yeah. added stand and the dumb effects like when they first came out like you said when you bought yours without removable hooks they were 120 yeah. then when they started doing removable hooks they moved to 150 and even 150 and I that's think is, a, is a good price yeah, yeah and, and let's say with inflation they went to maybe 175 or 200 right that would still be manageable but close to 300 I think this, this yeah. is straight price gouging I don't know who buy who would buy this who is buying it's these awesome outright yeah. it's amazing okay but just not worth the price I agree I 100 agree with you. It, yeah, that two that two seventy nine is is a lot. I mean, that's more yeah. than that. Well, how much was the Firefly? <laughs> yeah, no, for, you you could get Firefly and Four Joes for the same price. No, I get uh, the Giant Man. I'd rather get the Giant Man. Yeah, the Giant Man. There you go. <laughs> All right, and then next up, we are getting a Commander Rex helmet, and of course, we kind of knew this was coming right with the different releases that they've done. Uh, we're just kind of saying easy repaint. Honestly, I think they did. Well, no, well, no, not really. I did not see this one. I did not expect this one just because okay. it's not a repaint because it's a hybrid helmet. So it's actually an all new mold. Because it's the phase one. It's phase, phase one, phase two. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So okay. it's a new mold. It doesn't share molds with any of the hel other helmets. But yeah, I do love the, the paint work on this. The rusting above his visor, the blast marks, all the scuffs on it. I, mm -hmm. I really do dig it. Well, it is actually not rusting. What it is, it's actually the weld marks. It's the parts where he fused oh. the phase one with the phase two helmets. So those are actually weld marks. <laughs> yeah, I see. So he cut that, yeah. A lot better, yeah. Because it, it, for the most part, it's phase three, but he kept the phase one visor. Okay. He liked the phase one visor, yeah. <laughs> he also didn't want to lose his kill count. No, for those, well, for those no. flankers. <laughs> no, well, no. The, the, well, he has the phase two fin, though. So that's why there's weld marks at the top oh. of the brim. Oh, okay. Just the visor he wanted. He just wanted the visor, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, I think it, I think it looks really cool. And of course, Actually, everyone loves Rex, so exactly. Even at the one hundred thirty-two dollars price point, it's one of those things where if the character is that guy, it does not matter. <laughs> Whereas, like, people love Ezra, but not two seventy-nine. This could have been one hundred fifty dollars, yeah. 
it still would have been a get. It that's just the way it is. Sure. That's just the well, way it is with Rex. And he's just such a big, you know, big part of the clones. Like he's such a commander, right? You have Rex's helmet. You get all your uh, clone troopers around him, you know, displayed out. Mm-hmm. It looks sick. It looks sick. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it looks great from the Hasbro, the Star Wars team. There, not bad. Not bad. All right, and that's basically, that one, yeah. basically it for the announcements and reveals. Up next is just pipeline. So let's get into some of their pipeline reveals. Now we don't cover the vintage collection, but we all will be covering the Black Series here. They are giving us a Darth Vader New Hope, another Darth Vader, a Mandalorian. What the- what yeah. the? <laughs> and Mandalorian too. Like they don't say season three. They don't say nothing. They just say Mandalorian. You know? So who knows what, which, or what form of the Mandalorian is? But he doesn't change that much. So I don't know what they're gonna do. And also a Phase One clone trooper. So going good. back, going back to that as well. And one, I think a good, a nice addition to kind of army build is a Mandalorian Night Owl, right? To kind of recreate that final battle from season. Mandalorian season three. It's some nice yeah, nice easy repaint. You can just repaint, yeah, like axe wolves. Yeah, yeah you I mean, just put some white and red. Yeah, yeah, for sure, and just have more Mandalorians out there, uh, more, more night owls fighting alongside. So all helmets, no heads, no faces. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, under the clone trooper, there'll be a head, there'll be a face, though, kids. And maybe under Mando too. Yeah. That's true. That's true. But yeah, good to get the clone out because I feel like when it comes to that, it's such a good customizable, just clean, yeah. white, shiny boy that it, I, honestly, I wouldn't be mad if they did it like every five years. Just release more <laughs> phase one white clone, right? As long as it's not specific, oh, it's good. Right. Just keep them white. Just keep them in the keep them in the pipeline. It's always exactly. coming out. <laughs> All right. Well, that'll do it for the Star Wars Black Series uh, Hasbro PulseCon stuff. Let's jump over to Super 7. Let's keep going here. They are doing an $85 Krang Android, and it's more of like the battle damaged version of him. Here he is with the uh, Krang and the different accessories. Two different chest pieces, which I think is cool, but it is just that Super 7. I'm not seeing, maybe I'm missing it. Is there arm there's, articulation? Right? No, there's not. There's not. Okay, no, see, I, honestly, I to I me, this looks, like, this looks like a kid toy to me. When I see this, it's like a kid level sculpt and articulation personally yeah. yeah i agree dude i don't know super seven's kind of like even the arm i think only goes up and down like this like a kid's toy like a 5 PA right. kid's toy yeah pick up at the, at the dollar tree <laughs> nah and guess what the neck is probably either cheaper oh. or the same oh no it's way cheaper yeah just get the neck even yeah. on the aftermarket it's still gonna be cheaper and that one's a lot nicer better articulation i think honestly better accessories too Oh my gosh, yeah. Oh, that crank, yeah. So not bad there. Yeah, I don't know. Super 7, it's interesting. They definitely have a def, uh, a target audience. And I guess, because I never like anything they I never like anything to come out with. You're just not their audience. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right, let's jump up to SH Figure Arts. Kind of updating, or uh, well, for, before we get there, we got a uh, new Godzilla here. A Godzilla versus um gigan that uh that uh, rubber suit godzilla which is great because we just got gigan earlier this year and to get that you know complete that battle scene from that movie i think it's gonna be great and this one thing cool about this godzilla 75 bucks for this godzilla uh not bad that's a i think a really good price for this version of that of that godzilla but he comes with like a, a facial damaging too two head scopes there one clean and looking and then one de- battle damaged that's very cool man and i love the way this godzilla looks like i think it looks right out of the, the those old movies man that yeah. face is just like perfect execution i think on that face for me it's definitely like, i can see the rubber suit right and like that's yeah, not a, yeah. it's not a bad thing when i talk about godzilla like i like that because when you watch godzilla movies you know there's a dude in there doing dude stuff right like it's it's a rubber suit and so i like that i can still feel that in this and Honestly, a very a, a lot more classic uh, Godzilla, right? Not yeah. that long a tail, nothing's accentuated, but just kind of straight Godzilla there. Yeah, not bad. And then just a quick update on the Berserk. So Guts in the full Berserk armor. They finally solicited it, $96. And the first Guts SH figure arts has now sold out, right? So you can't get that one anymore. So it's kind of cool to get this one. And honestly, I, I do like this full Berserk where he's the armor has fully taken over him. He's in his hound. He's like, he's just fully re- like berserk mode. <laughs> and man, he just looks 
easy. And something I'm kind of noticing with the import companies in regards to like figure arts and Figma is that they're starting to use a lot more soft goods. While that does mean an increase in price point, it's right. getting more and more common now um, with Figma and figure arts. Like Figma just released their uh, Vinland Saga Thorfinn. Okay. And it's like fully decked out in clothes, like cloth goods. Oh, and it's like that's really? something that. And it's something that like Figma and figure arts have always gone away from. They've always just been hard plastic, solid plastic. And yeah. I'm liking that they're doing more soft goods. That it does increase the price, but. Right. Yeah, we'll see if they keep. I mean, it looks like that trend is continuing. We'll probably use it where they can. But with this, you get those three different head scopes, too. You get like one where he's still aware of what's happening, then when he's angry and then fully cowled where the berserk armor has taken over and he's just raging. So, um, and the only difference on this one is like the cape and the head sculpt from the other release. Cause the other release, he is wearing the berserk armor, just not fully uh, yeah. cowled out. So, but looks great, looks great. All right, let's jump over to Mafex. With Mafex, they are giving us a Justice League Batman, a Batfleck, right? $105. Mafex is finally getting to this, holy crap, man. I mean, who do they have left? They did Cyborg, they did Aquaman, Superman in black they suit, Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman. Yeah, yeah. This would be this would be the last one. Finally, finish out the they Snyder. They Flash race. too. Yeah, they done Flash. Yep. That's <laughs> finished in Cyborg. So I think he looks great. I think he definitely. It's a really good interpretation of the movie. He's thick in the right places, and they're doing this soft goods cape on him, which is not. I'm not sure if it's uh, wired doesn't look like it from this but it's not wired and that well the sides are wired the sides are wired but the bottom's not wired okay so you get some posability yeah but the pleather though it it yeah the outside the inside does well yeah no that's inside, just, no inside's cloth inside's cloth but that's how like the pleather is right one side yeah. is cloth and then the other sides uh, i don't know if i like that it will look good but it's gonna peel yeah definitely if you're not taking care of it um, but what do you think of the head sculpt here? I'm not, I'm not, I'm personally not seeing the uncowed, the cow that's, they can pull it off, right? Cause it's just cow, but unmasked, not seeing Ben Affleck. I think it's good, but I don't think it's the standard that Mayfix usually has. You know what I'm saying? So like, okay. it's good, yeah, but yeah. Like, like for me personally, I believe that Mayfix has the best likenesses from all companies. So it, it's just it's not, not up, up to, to Mayfix standard, standard right. but it's still good. I think they did an amazing job with the stubble and, and the lips. I think they did a really good job. Really life. Mm -hmm. There's like a lifeness, a life yeah. likeness. To I think them. it's the eyes. The eyes. Yeah. I don't know. Something off there. It, it's, it, it looks like him, but something's a little bit off, but it's still good. <laughs> it's good enough, I think. Yeah. So, and, you know, at least at least they did an unmasked head sculpt, because if you look true. back to the uh, the Justice League, um, that fleck that the arts did, it was just cow. There was no unrest. Right. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, I think that's something that figure arts more and more is starting to cower away from. I feel like doing Ooh. whole unmasked head sculpts. I don't know. Something's up with them. They're getting scared to do it. Whereas at least Mayfex is doing They go them. for it. They go for it. Yeah. They trust themselves. Yeah. It's hard. It is hard at the scale. It's hard. It is hard to get it. And different actors have different faces and yeah. can't always accurately portray it. Some are easier than others. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But he comes with a little this grappling gun, which is cool, and a battering. Yeah, no, I think it looks it looks great for this, and I do love the belt too, where it's not like a, a bright yellow; it's more of that dingy metal. Yeah, That's yeah, yeah. Copper to it. Even yeah. the gauntlets too, the same on the gauntlets. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's nice. No, this is what this was is the some... price on this? Like a hundred bucks, like ninety six bucks. Uh, one hundred five. One hundred five. Okay. Okay. So. I mean, I'm not sure what the other ones are running, but that's around Mayfix's standard price point. Okay. With the additional head too, right? So, mm -hmm. well, the different heads. So. Well, yeah, we can finally finish the team. I know we finished the Years How later, long? Yeah. How long, man? How long? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I have I don't to remember know. when that movie came out. It's like been 2016, a I think. Yeah, I think so it's 2016. Sheesh. Like, what, seven years? Yeah, seven, seven eight years. years. All right, but well, let's go ahead and touch on something that kind of came and went. The Four Horsemen, of course, they're the, the company behind Mythic Legions and Cosmic Legions. They have a subline called Figure Obscura, where they kind of do just mythic or like folklore, myths, just people. Honestly, call, basically whatever they want, right? <laughs> anything they want, like anything that's been written down, right? Any literature or maybe it might even be cryptids one day. That's what I hope for. But they released the Mask of the Red Death. 
uh, figure here, which right in time for spooky season, you get this really cool. It's a it's an Edgar Allan Poe story about people who want to get away from the plague and then they host this party. But then they something happens where everyone, you know, it's an Edgar Allan Poe story. <laughs> but you get the figure with this great cloth goods. You get like this blood splatter, which is cool. The, uh, the clock, which that clock also comes with uh, a, a crow on top of it to kind of go back to the Edgar Allan Poe's more famous uh, poem. Um, but yeah, look at the boxing, looking at the box art, Nate Barch, he's the man, always crushes it. He did all the work for this, as well as the, not only do you get the figure and the display case, but you also get a little comic book, the, the actual illustrated version of the story. They had a little booklet of it. That's such a nice detail, I think. That's just like just like how we do we talk about what with McFarlane when he does the the page punchers. Yeah. Where sometimes sometimes as collectors, toy collectors, we just buy toys for the love of toys and we might not have an extreme attachment or even any attachment at all. We just buy it because it's a good toy. And right. maybe a lot of people, including me, I've never heard of this story. And so when same, I get this figure, same. when I yeah. get this figure, I can then form somewhat of an attachment to it. You can learn about it. And like they did that with Monkey King too, with Sung Wukong. Like they had the whole, le- not, they didn't have all the whole legend, but they had like a quick synopsis of mm-hmm. Monkey King. If you weren't aware of him, you could learn about yeah. it. You know, and so, and then you can do your own research from there, right? <laughs> so exactly. At the, at, they do do a good job of that, of adding those extra materials to support the character. Mm. And I love the saw, the cloth, the actual material that they use for this, because I yeah. believe that while there's high thread counts, this material i'm not sure what it is uh, um the wrinkles muslin. so wrinkle it's not called muslin <laughs> it wrinkles very well um at this scale compared to other fabrics but one thing though is that it's still up for sale and um i yeah. i follow a, like i've been following every figure of skura I, I, and i did order this one but i was very on the fence about this one and Same. i feel like that was a common thing like i just got it just because i I just collect everything like I had to get everything but I think the issue is is that figure obscuras only ship by themselves and so when I got out to check out it was $87 just for one figure yes it's a phenomenal figure I love it but is it $87 worth like after tax and shipping it hurts and I think people probably got to the checkout and were like what the $87 I mean it, yeah. it, it, it's, the, it's the issue that they don't have retailers but whereas when you buy a wave, you're buying multiple figures, three, four, five, or even all in, and you end up paying when you when I buy the all ins, it's like twenty five bucks for shipping. Right. When I buy this figure alone, it's like seventeen bucks. So yeah, like the increase from one figure to ten is only like nine or eight dollars, and so it's hard to justify when these do these figure obscures where they're just releasing one, and you have to yeah. pay that huge shipping. And especially if you don't have an attachment, right? Like, yeah, I definitely felt that exact same way when I saw this figure. I was like, it looks cool. It's a great, looks like a great figure. It's going to be mythic level quality, but that attachment wasn't fully there. Like Sun Wukong, that was a get from the first, like, I didn't even have to think about it. I love that character. I know that character. This was, I was more on the fence about it. Um, and yeah, they're still in stock, right? Like they hit, they not only did last week, they sold this, they went, this went up for pre-order or sorry, went for sale. And then they this week they're coming back calling it like a cancellation last chance like i honestly feel like they w- didn't fully sell their stock and i understand there yeah, is probably cancellations it, but no it, it's it's the price point and like you said the attachment thing because this is actually i've i followed and i always check up on figure obscures and uh, mythic legions in stock sales in general yeah always once after the 24 hours have passed and the two limit per customer has passed they lift the restrictions and anybody can buy as many figures as right, they want right right yeah after the 24 hours and i remember back to the sun wukong back to the krampus back to the headless horseman even father christmas once they lifted that 24 hours it did not last another 12 hours it did not last another right. full day I, right. like the, the wukong lasted um until once they lifted that no hold bar Bam, yeah the next day it was sold out restriction yeah restriction yeah and this one a whole week after they reopened it with and it's still currently available. it's still they, yeah it's still currently they inside. even said like it's limited this won't be as many you know trying mm-hmm. to get you to buy it right but i feel like they just it just wasn't moving and, and again it, it's just familiarity mm. and the good thing though is they go to a lot of conventions so they'll, they'll be yeah. able to slowly yeah. move it there 
Oh yeah, for sure. Because th- th- then you don't have to front the shipping, and I think that's what's yeah. killing people. Yeah, seventeen bucks, especially us on the West Coast here, or at least mm-hmm. Western United States. Yeah, yeah, because it is. It would be cheaper if you're east. You're right. Yeah, it would be cheaper, but we are over here in Utah, and so it kind of takes a while to get here. <laughs> a little more money yeah. for them. Uh, but let's get back to the figure here. One cool thing that Door Player was saying when he had his review up for it, he uh, mentioned that a lot of these parts are from current Mythic Legion waves that have been announced but not released. So That's the have- Blue Zombie four pack. Yeah, so we get the Blue <laughs> Zombie, four- the, and then the I believe some of the All Star Plus six wave, the tunic there. It's from the All-Stars 6 Plus. So cool to get those pieces as, you know, as all Mythic Collectors like to swap things out to get those pieces that haven't been released yet, technically. So, so kind of cool. And, and, and people are already getting this, right? <laughs> like they have them ready to ship and pretty quick turnaround yeah. within that week. So, and apparently, uh, Bill said this, there's a surprise under the mask. So that mask okay. is removable. And apparently it's a pretty, he said, I'll quote Bill, nightmare fuel. <laughs> That's, so awesome. The That's so, so awesome. That's so awesome because they done that with Krampus's like goodie bag, goodie bag Santa's yeah. goodie bag, even <laughs> uh, Father Christmas. Same thing. Yeah. His bag had extra, uh, had alt heads like for your knights for your mythic yeah. visions. Yeah. And Sun Wukong, same thing, right? Had some goodies. I love that. Yeah. So I'm, and apparently I, I've, you know, I'm following most of the, you know, so I'm in that community, the mythic community, and haven't seen anyone post. The what's under the mask and so because people kind of, know people are very respectful of the surprise yeah, they're very respectful so it's kind of cool that it's been a whole week and people have these figures and no one's kind of spoiled it you know fully for everyone so it hasn't been made around so kind of excited when this gets here to see what's under the mask we'll see but yeah that is the figure obscura mask of the red death figure and looks great also that accessory piece of a clock that's great again i love that 112 stuff man yeah. Love it, love it, love it, love it. That, that, yeah, that, that thing is crazy good. That Yeah. And it comes with that crow on top. And the blood the blood splatter, the blood pooling plate thing that you can have. That's going to be great for photography. Yeah. And I, you're, you're right. And I think that's where, like, I was leaning on the fence because it was so expensive. But the, the accessories, it kind of makes it worth it in the end. I agree. Because they're big. They're big and- things. Uh, again um again sorry i watched bills just to kind of get more bills review of this that it's it's a the elbow joint in the arm it goes past 90 it's a, and that's it's, a, it's a very impressive joint there for seeing mm-hmm. yeah and that's something that the four horsemen have always kind of been talking about we haven't seen it yet just because technically you're right that's such a that's a, such a great point you bring up because they've been talking about it for so long it's been kind of one of the biggest complaints within the mythic legions community that they'll just a lack of articulation and like years ago they're like we're working on something we're working on to get right. better articulation on these figures and you know just because their turnaround time is so long the, yeah. this technically you're right is the first kind of in hand of that no articulation stuff scene. yeah, yeah. That's so true. it's impressive like i it was past 90 it wasn't like a full like mcfarlane folded up right yeah but it was it was it was a good you know i would say 80 you know 100 degrees and that's very good because most mythic legions go 80 so if it's 110 or 100 that yeah. is like because usually mythic legions are like under just under the 90 they don't even get to 90 right, they just kind of stop right there <laughs> yeah yeah they're close but not quite 90 but yeah this picture reminded me there here because it's that's it's almost to his face man you're right so really exciting to see that there all right but that's going to wrap it up for part two of our coverage of hasbro pulsecon week lots and lots of news we also added some extra uh, stuff from other people you know just wrapping up the toy news this week as well so thank you everyone for tuning in we of course are doing our 100 our road to 1000 subscriber giveaway john's gonna tell you all about it right here today we are announcing our road to 1000 subscribers giveaway in this giveaway we're going to give away one lucky subscriber their choice this figure or this so we're looking at a mix mayfield as well as art commander havoc all right and once we have reached our goal of a thousand subscribers we will pick a global winner across all of our weekly podcast episodes so make sure you're commenting down each week for multiple entries into the giveaway be sure that you are subscribed to our channel if you haven't already if you're not subscribed hit that subscribe button 
to stay up to date on all of our content here. And if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to show some love and smash that like button. All right, let's head back to the pick of the week. All right, let's jump into our pick of the week. What are you thinking, Josh? What is your pick of the week? Now, it is the same week, but part two. We'll allow part more. Two, yeah, there's, part there's, two, yeah. There's enough, yeah. My <laughs> pick of the week is going to be the Captain Rex Black Series oh, role playing helmet. I got to wow, go with that thing. Okay, I think okay. it looks so good. The paint apps. I don't care that it's $130. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a dream come true to get that helmet. I agree, especially with you knowing all the lore behind it. I think that the fact that they added that, you know, just yeah. shows the respect that they have for people who are fully invested, uh-huh. who all, know all the little things about it, their favorite you know, clone commanders. So, so yeah, no, I think that, I think I agree with you. That it's a solid pick, dude. Nice pick, nice. Pick. All right, for me, I'm kind of torn. I do love Berserk, but I, I picked him last time when he was first announced. Guts. So I think I'm going to go Mask of the Red Death. I'm going to go Mask of the Red Death. Um, yeah, I was a little iffy about it, but learning more about it and to get the to get that many cloth goods to play around with, not only just to keep on this figure, but to also play around with the other figures, I'm very excited for. <laughs> and he does, exactly. look, it does look cool. Exactly. Yeah, that's where my mind went to. Like, I was like, where can I use those cloth goods on? That's exactly. <laughs> So, so excited there, but that will be my pick of the week. Especially that, like, that crop, like the one that goes across. If you get, like, a clean, like, naked body, you could do, like, a monk. Yeah. Well, I guess you haven't seen Ahsoka, but yeah, you could do a monk. Like a uh, Tibetan monk or like a, like, Aang or something, you know? Yeah. Like, like some type of spiritual person, you know, spiritual man, someone who walks the desert. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Wanders the desert. Or even, like, you could dye it black and put, like, the red skull, like, red skull has Marvel Legends head skull, maybe on it. Oh. And do like the the Red Skull from Infinity War could work. That could work. Oh yeah, the one that's on that planet, huh? Because he has like a black robe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, look good. Dang. That would look cool. That would. All right. Well, thanks, friends, for tuning in to another episode of the Action Figure Podcast. As always, keep collecting, keep playing. May the action figure gods smile upon you. Peace. <laughs>